Well, thanks to the man next to me, Roger Varian, there was an equine involvement at breakfast with the stars this morning. Roger, you brought one of your Oaks entries to Teca to work on the downs. What were, you, what were your thoughts on what she did? She did everything we asked. You know, we didn't bring her down here to see how far she could go. You know, she worked at home on Saturday morning, did a good work. And, um, you know, we brought her down here for a, another day away from home. She's only ran once on turf. Her two starts as a two-year-old was on the all-weather. Um, so the exercise in itself did have a world of good. I thought she looked great. She travelled around nicely. Andrea was happy that she came down the hill well. Um, and, you know, she... She moved forward nicely past, past the lead horse in the final furlong. It was a nice confidence boosting, sort of strong canter with a little bit of a squeeze at the end. And um, I should think she would have enjoyed it. Mentally, I'm sure it will bring her forward again. So I think it was a very worthwhile exercise. On the form book, oh, she has a bit to find on, on, the, on the trial effort. Um, but clearly, you wouldn't be going forward to the Oaks unless you thought you had a chance of reversing that form. Yes, she, look, she was uh, no match of a winner at Lingfield, but she was four and a half lengths clear of the rest of her field, you know, with some nice fillies behind her. I went into that race not, not quite believing she had come to herself. You know, she had uh, took a while to get through the spring and um, we weren't sure what to expect from her that day. So I was actually pleased with her run. Since then, she's, you know, really turned herself inside out. She looks a different filly. She's eating well. Coats come forward. She looks to have just developed you know mentally and physically and um, I was pleased with her work on Saturday you know she's definitely come on a few lengths from that Lingfield run whether it's enough to to be good enough to win in Oaks you know we will, probably won't find out until we run her but I think she's um, you know, she's I went into the winter thinking she could be an Oaks filly and you know since she ran at Lingfield she's starting to give me that uh, feel again all oh, sounds really positive about Torteca then. We know we're going to be seeing her, fingers crossed, at, at Epsom here next Friday. What about Norsha, the Musidora winner? Yeah, she's. I'm not going to rule her out of running at Epsom, but I'm not sure that she'll line up. She's come out of a race very well, the, the Musidora. She's a very nice filly going forward, nice filly for the rest of the year. Um, she's in the French Oaks, which, you know, at this stage we, we might uh, favour. But. Um, Look, you know, her, her win was only last week. We've had a busy time since then. We've been racing at the weekend. I'm down here today. I saw her canter yesterday. I thought she moved great. I won another seven to ten days watching her at home. And I've got to speak with Mr. Bizikoff, who owns both fillies. And, you know, we'll make final plans. But, you know, they're both possibles at this stage. Neither are confirmed. It's likely one will run. And, you know, we'll, we'll see how they are over the next week. So a decision to make regarding the Oaks, Roger. Also a decision to make regarding the Derby. Um, you've been very clear how highly you regard Surfman and you were pre presumably pretty encouraged by what you saw in the Dante last week. Yeah, it was a very good run in the Dante. I thought it uh, stood him out to be a, a pretty smart prospect going forward, which is what we wanted to see. It's what we felt he was. And um, It was a frustrating race how it panned out with a field being so strung out, but... You know, I wanted him ridden cold that day. I wanted to learn a bit more about him. I wanted to give him a chance uh, early in the race. And, you know, that probably transpired against us in terms of how close we finished to the, the first two. But, you know, he made up good ground in the straight. It was a very good run in defeat and um, he's going to be a good horse going forward. Will he be a good horse going forward in the derby or might he be more patient? Well, too early to say. You know, it's, it sounds daft. The derby's only, what, 11 days away but he's only just run at York again a busy weekend with runners you know he, he's come out of a race well he looks great but I, I need a chance to train him and to watch him every morning so the seven days 10 days ahead of us are going to be very important for the decision whether surfman runs or not might be a decision we don't make until Thursday morning next week so um, he's a possible you know and uh, it'd be very exciting if he was to line up but there's no more than a possible at the moment. And relative to the three horses we've been speaking about, Defoe is a really familiar name. We know Defoe very well, not as well as you do, but um, will we be seeing him in the Coronation Cup on Friday week? Yeah, we're planning to run him. He's in great form. Um, you know, he's uh, probably took a run or two this year to really come to himself, but I thought he ran well at Newmarket. And, um, 
you know, he's in great form at home, really looking forward to running him. We'd love a splash of rain if there was some about because he, he prefers a bit of ease in the ground. But if there's no rain, I'm sure that Andrew will have the course in great shape come next Friday. And um, look, we, we, we love the horse. He, you know, he's been a great servant over the last few years and he's got more big races in him. He's never won at uh, the top level. He's gone close three times. You know, it'll be a tough, tough race for Coronation Cup as it always is. But, you know, he'll run well, I'm sure of that.